today's webinar session. We from Renew highly appreciate your time and sharing with us today. So I would like to welcome our speaker, chemist Dr. Sharu Nizam Ahmad. How are you, Dr. Nizam? I'm great, thank you. This thank meeting you. is being recorded. Okay, first of all, let's share with you the background of chemist Dr. Sharu Nizam Ahmad. Dr. Sharu Nizam Ahmad is a certified chemist who has working experience in both academics and industry, accumulatively more than 10 years as a chemist and educator. He is now senior lecturer at the School of Chemistry and Environment, Faculty of Applied Science, UITM Sha'alam Malaysia. She has been seconded to the Institute of Quality and Knowledge Advancement, INCA, as the head of communication and knowledge advancement. He is also an active member of the Young Scientist Network Academy of Science Malaysia, Malaysian Young Chemist Network, and International Unions of Cure and Applied Chemists, Applied Chemistry. Okay. He has been entrusted to lead public outreach team of International Younger Scientist Network, with he which he has been an executive board member. His main research interest is synthesis and spectra characterization of new ligands and metal complexes. The synthesized palladium, nickel, latinum, and other metal transition com and metal complexes have been studied for their properties as a homogeneous and heterogeneous catalyst, as well as their antibacterial cytotoxicity and DNA binding properties. He has published and reviewed WOS and Scopus Index publications and currently supervising three PhD and two master students as the main and co-supervisor. Today, we are glad to have Dr. Nizam here sharing his tips and experience in successful green chemistry research grant for young scientists research grant application. As we are having a Q&A session at the end of the webinar session, you may drop your question in the chat box and we will address them during the Q&A session or you may also allow to unmute the microphone and ask the question directly. For your information, the session is recorded and will be live streaming on YouTube TNCPI UITM. The recorded version will be available at TNCPI YouTube if you miss or wanted to rewatch the webinar later. Without further delay, Please welcome chemist Dr. Sharu Nizam Ahmad. Doctor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and Dr. Tay, uh, let me share the slide with you first. So let me check whether you can see the slide, um, Dr. Tay. Yeah. And my boss is clear enough, yeah? Because yeah, I'm you can the second slide and see whether we can see or not. Ah, yeah, sure. This is the slide. Okay. Similar as what we Yeah, same, same as the poster, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm, I'm wondering, is it the, your slide or the background slide from us? Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Now, um, uh, thank you very much, Assistant Professor at the day, um, for the kind introduction. Um, she is also a good friend of mine from the same faculty of Black Sciences. And I'm happy to be here. And first and foremost, let me thank uh, RMC and also Renew as well as Pajabat DNCPI for uh, the kind of invitation for this webinar session. I'm very humbled and honored to be here to be speaking and sharing with you on the successful application of the grant, which is known as Green Chemistry Research Grants for Young Scientists. Now, um, before I start, uh, it is safe for me to say that you might be, um, you know, uh, the, this, this grant probably have a few uh, other names. So probably that's something that I'll be um, talking a bit later. So as for now, because this is, uh, because this is the, the name of the grant that, uh, that is mentioned in the contract. So I'm using this as a title. So Green Chemistry Research Trans for Young Scientists but there are some other names for this grant as well. And I'd like to welcome all the attendees. Uh, as the name of the grant suggests, this is for young scientists. But uh, worry not, um, based on my observation, uh, I think 
the principal investi- investigator must be young scientist it uh, must be aged around 39 years old and below but the members of the grant can be can be older than that i mean can be 40 and above um, and based on my experience as well uh, one of my member is professor dr Adela Barun. she has retired but she was 53 upon application so uh, we don't see that there is a problem for um, people um, older than 39 years old to be part of the grant but um, this is just for uh, the introduction so that uh, you can stay here if you are more than 39 years old and do not worry you can be part of the grant and um, this will tell you that uh, um, for the principal investigator or the leader it must be 39, 39 years old and uh, below okay now um, before I start and talk further about how to apply the background of the grant and so forth um, I think I would like to tell a bit about myself uh, even though uh, Dr. T has um, given a brief introduction about myself but it is important for me to say that uh, I am relatively new to UITM system. I joined UITM in 2019 as a senior lecturer after I graduated from my uh, PhD. Before that, I work as a teacher and also a junior lecturer at some other private colleges and also um, at some other universities. And having said that, uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, my research profile is not that outstanding. I mean, um, well, comparatively uh, speaking, when we talk about research profile, hash index, number of applications, I am quite um, far behind from my colleagues. I'm saying this because that shouldn't stop you from applying this grant because we never knew uh, Riziki. And I'm very humbled to have secured and received this grant and I've never hoped and thought that I could be uh, securing the grant to be really honest that uh, based on my uh, research background and uh, I just try my luck and I think uh, that was all there is the key. So it is important for you also to stay um, because some people uh, came and approached me and asked, uh, I'm not a good researcher, my research background is not as good as others, but worry not because in fact until now my research profile is so-so. So, um, well, uh, I think UNESCO is fine enough. The, uh, considered um, young scientists, early career young scientists, young chemists to apply this and that's why this grant is specifically designed for young scientists and I'm telling you this because some of my friends um, quite hesitant uh, and reluctant, they don't believe in themselves that they can apply. I think the very important for uh, for a successful application is to apply for the grant first. You have to make attempt to apply and only then we know whether we are eligible or not eligible whether it is successful or not successful um try try anyway because we never knew whether it is successful or not successful so um i'm telling you all this about research background about me myself about my research profile because uh as a young scientist i believe that we have this kind of syndrome that we are having sometimes low esteem um especially to apply uh, research grant. So we thought that we are not eligible. We, we thought that we are not qualified enough. So that's that's my introduction here. Yeah? Dr. T, I think it is important for all of us who are here, who are watching, who are here in this webex or who are watching from the YouTube. It's important for you to know that um, to Belgium, mm-hmm. just try and let the international scientific jury decide. Now, um, as the name of the uh, grant suggests, it is international grant um, for green chemistry for young scientists. So the element of green chemistry must be there because we know that we have been talking about sustainable development. We have been talking about green chemistry for so long already. And the 12 principles of green chemistry have been there like more than two decades. So um, it is not new. So that's why um, uh, in 2014, Green Chemistry for Life project was launched by UNESCO, uh, strongly supported by FOSS uh, Agro. FOSS Agro is the largest 
uh, fertilizer producer in Europe, and also the International Union of Pure and Impact Chemistry, IUPAC. So these three organizations have come out with a very special project, which is called Green Chemistry for Life. So as I said earlier, these grants uh, are also known as Force Agro slash UNESCO slash IUPAC research grants in, in green chemistry, or it is also known as Green Chemistry for Life grant, or it's also known as Green Chemistry Research Grants for Young Scientists. So when you um, uh, look at the website later, you will see probably, I don't know, I personally got confused initially. So which grant that I am supposed to be applying, I don't know uh, which is which at first. But um, as the time goes by, after I did a, a bit of, of research, so I found out that they are naming these grants with few names, uh, as I have uh, mentioned earlier. So do not get confused when you are looking at the website. Now, um, green chemistry must be there. The elements of green chemistry must be there. And uh, this is the grant or the right platform, the right grant for uh, young scientists to show their um, to show or to demonstrate their innovative or invention side of your research. Now, uh, and that um, particular research must be very much related to sustainable development. And I think in every grant that we applied, uh, every researcher knows this, that we have to um, somehow uh, incorporate our research project uh, to the theme of Sustainable Development Goal SDG. So that's something that is required also in this grant. I'll be talking uh, a bit um, deeper on this particular part, but it is safe um, to say that for a start, it is important for us to know that the green chemistry uh, principle must be there, that there are 12 green chemistry principles. You have to choose and select which principle that suits you the most according to your project. And the second part, of course, you have to uh, somehow associate your project with Sustainable Development Goal SDG. Now, uh, moving on next, um, as I have um, also mentioned earlier, so the very objective of the grant is to support innovative research project by young scientists that adhere to 12 principles of green chemistry. I'll be uh, listing out all the principles slightly later. Now, you may ask, what is innovative research project? No, uh, to be really honest, I don't really know what is innovative, what is not innovative. But um, based on my observation, based on the previous um, winners of the grant, uh, I could see that, um, well, for every grant, I think the demand would be the same, that they must, but they, they must be some novelty of your research project. And I think that is the, most suitable definition of innovative research project. It doesn't have to be new as a new, but some innovation must be there. And novelty must be there, and that must be clearly indicated in the research project. So the proposal, my proposal, um, was very simple and very short. It was not a very long proposal. I think one of the shorter proposals that I have, uh, that I have ever uh, prepared for, for a grant. Um, but there are few um, keywords and then, then there are few elements that they want to be uh, included in the in the grant. So that's something that I'll be talking uh, uh, later. So who is eligible? As I said uh, earlier, young scientists up to age 39 and below with a PhD degree or equivalent in chemistry or similar areas. Now you may ask, what if my PhD is in other areas like probably material science or biochemistry or what else? Physics. Um, well, uh, later I'll be showing you the guidelines. In the guidelines, the, um, the, the, the guidelines are more details, but I'm just putting some generic uh, requirements here. But in that guideline, uh, it says that any related discipline or any interdisciplinary discipline uh, or area that also can be accepted. 
And in fact, um, the co-investigator, the co-PI of this project that I collaborated with, he has a PhD in material science. So he is not chemist. In fact, he doesn't really understand certain things about, about, uh, about chemistry. But uh, we secured the grant anyway. So if you are from different background, I mean, non-chemistry background, I think you are also eligible to apply. And uh, this eligibility is for the principal investigator. So I think for the co-investigator, uh, it can be uh, any age. Yeah. So they have a quite generous amount of, fund of funding, about 2.5 million uh, USD for over six years of project. So, um, well, they are, they're supposed to be having annual opening of the grant. But from my observation, um, well, uh, I applied this in 2021, and there is no opening in 2022. And now they uh, are opening the grant again in 2023. So there is a two years gap. Uh, before that, it was offered in 2018, and it was offered in 2015, and it was offered in 2014. So there is no, uh, there is no, what can I say? Uh, there is no pattern um, on how frequent the grant is offered. So, but uh, we are lucky enough that I thought that it's not open, uh, it's not going to be open again, but we are lucky enough that it's open again this year. So I would like to invite everyone uh, from UITM to apply this. And later, uh, I'll be mentioning this again, but uh, it is also safe to say that only one, only one project will be awarded per institution. <clears throat> so I'm losing my voice, yeah? I might be having, <laughs> I'm having some sore throat, uh, but bear with me. Um, <clears throat> we are, um, say we are having like 50 applications from UITM, only one application will be uh, awarded the grant. Uh, so it's very, very competitive. But um, I shared this news with uh, everyone anyway, even though it was competitive in 2020, 2021. But when I was applying, I was also sharing this with my friends. So because I believe in Rizuki. So um, I think the best project or probably the luckiest project that you will be chosen and selected. I believe that they are more, much, much more competitive and much, much more outstanding projects submitted to the International Scientific Jury, but we are lucky enough to have been given uh, and to have been awarded the grant. Now, um, funding partners for SAGRO, UNESCO and IUPAC, this has also been mentioned earlier. Now, just to give you some overview how competitive the grant is, uh, since 2014, um, the International Scientific Jury, uh, consisting of 13 scientists from 11 countries, I'll be um, displaying the name of the jury uh, slightly later. But there are 13 scientists from 11 countries. All of them have reviewed more than 700 applications from 120 countries, submitted by, of course, the scientists uh, from all over the part of this world. So in 2014, they received 110 applications, only only six research projects selected. In 2015, they have 119 applications, only six grants awarded. In 2018, 97 applications have been reviewed, but only nine scholars received the grants. And I was among the eight scholars that received the grants in 2020, but I'm not sure how many applications sent to them uh, because the data is not it's not available online, but um, I think it is about the same numbers. It's around 80, 90 to 120 applications. That's why I said earlier, I'm very humble and um, I think it is all, all uh, risky. I've never hoped to get this grant, but uh, it is granted to me. And since my research profile is very <laughs> mediocre, to say the least, um, so I think for all of you, I think most of you, your research profile are outstanding. So you will stand a better chance to get this grant. Uh, that's something that I can, I can, I can really say. Yeah. Uh, so please uh, sign your application and also 
just just try it like we never knew and uh, i got my i got my uh, proposal re rejected multiple times you don't want to know so <laughs> this is one of the luckiest grant that i've got and um, but i've never give up because i think it is important for the sustainability of our research i think everyone knows every researcher knows every lecturer knows that we have to have we need to have a grant to survive without ground we don't have student without student we don't have papers without papers we don't have kpi achieved so that is the, the the cycle so it's very important for us to secure the grant and um, i'm lucky lucky enough to get this grant uh, secured okay next um start moving now this is geography of grant winners over the years so they, they do not have any specific region continent or nation that they are um, targeting. So it can be any young scientist, any young scientist from any part of this world. So you can see, so there are winners from Latin America, Brazil, Peru, Argentina, Uruguay. There are winners from Europe, France, Belgium, Spain, Italy, Ukraine, Nigeria, in fact, Bosnia and Herzegovina. And they are winners from Africa, they are winners from Asia, including Malaysia, and they are winners from Australia. So I put Vietnam there in 2020 because I collaborated, uh, I'm collaborating this project with um, Vietnam scientists, they are material uh, scientists. And for the very first time in 2022, Vietnam is now mapped as one of the winners. So we are very proud to be, uh, to be one of the winners in 2022. So, worry not um that whatever you are um because some of my friends are asking whether they can they can watch this i think they are here watching so regardless where they are um where you locate, uh, located or resided so i think it is it is it is open for everyone yeah and uh, later i'll be showing you the guidelines because um you might be wondering whether do we have to do we do we have to collaborate with international collaborators or can we just collaborate among ourselves uh, that's something that was uh, studied later so the ceiling of the grant is uh, 30000 usd so about 120000 or 130000 ringgit malaysia and um, the fund can be used for travel and living expenses now, uh, because we have home institution and we have host institution, uh, like in my case, uh, I'm doing my research here at UITM and the second part of the research is now being done uh, uh, concurrently at Phonica University uh, in Hanoi. So in this case, me as home institution and they are host institution. So they provide travel uh, grant um 2000 uh, usd for two people for two researchers so we can travel there for three for, for three weeks so we are going there we are going to hanoi at the end of this uh, month for for a week or so yeah so we can use that for travel and then uh, definitely for purchase and rental of research equipment i don't have everything in my lab uh our ccg lab is um we are blessed with a uh, few equipment that station as you know this stability and so forth but we don't have instruments that nmr in our lab but nmr is here in uitm and then we don't have srd srd we um we a uh, single srd we we send our crystal to our rims to the tamarina the tamarina also is a member of this project and then uh, those uh, rental professional services, like when you are sending samples outside, that also can be covered under this grant. Consumables, and then publication, and also for conferences. So we allocated around 6,000 USD for conferences and also for publication. Now, uh, the submission of uh, applications, well, uh, again, um, I would like to put some emphasis here that my slides are very brief, but I'll go through 
uh, the sample of my proposal and also the details of the document needed for the application data. But this is just some generic information. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that you have to have is synopsis of proposed project. And it, it must be related to green chemistry. So uh, the application form is given. So you have to follow the format. Uh, I'll be showing you later. And um, the second one, you have to have your short CV. Um, short CV also, they have a certain format. And then a copy of candidate's PhD, your PhD certificates uh, of all members of the co uh, of sorry of the principal investigator and letter of approval from candidates home institute so if you are applying so you have to get approval from your dean or your director of coe and then letter of acceptance from post institute uh, this is what i was talking about just now uh, letter of acceptance from the university or institution that you are collaborating with and a letter of recommendation from referee um, all will be submitted. All will be all will be submitted to uh, through email in one single PDF file, except for a letter of recommendation. So this recommendation letter will be um, emailed separately by your referee. So please bear in mind yeah? if you are submitting this letter of recommendation together with your application, your, your application might be might be disqualified yeah so you have to be very careful with the uh, uh with this with this uh procedure i think they are quite sensitive with this thing so the letter of recommendation must be kept as private and confidential as possible okay um now these are the principles of green chemistry that we have been bragging about and i think you know this better than me i'm just um as a young researcher i'm trying my best to make sure that the project, the research project that I'm doing is as thin as possible. In fact, before I'm, I'm applying this grant, so just a bit on my research. Um, well, uh, I am a trained chemist, so I am doing synthesis of ligand, as mentioned by Dr. Tay just now. I'm doing synthesis of organic ligands and metal complexes. So mostly you can say that I am synthesis chemist. But um, we have been using a reflux for so many years already. So the use of reflux is consuming a lot of solvent, time, and also energy. In fact, when the nuclearity of the complexes, meaning when the number of metal is getting higher and higher, the time needed to process or to reflux or to synthesize those metal complexes will be longer. So in fact, certain synthesis will take up uh up to 72 hours three days straight so it is not really mm, sustainable uh, to me and we try to um try different approach in synthesis so that's why we purchased a microwave assisted synthesis reactor uh in 2016 you know, and using that reactor we can save a lot of time 72 hours now can be shortened up to like two seconds or 30 seconds or even one minute. So now the synthetic process has gotten even much, much more efficient. So uh, we started that much earlier before the application of this grant, in fact. <laughs> and the second thing, I am doing also a bit on catalysis. I'm not really um, an expert on catalysis, but um, I am testing my compound, my metal complexes especially, as heterogeneous and homogeneous catalysts in mostly catalytic reactions like Sonogashira, Hack, Suzuki, and so forth. Now, catalysis provides a safe lot of energy. So, as we all know, the basic understanding of catalysts is uh, we can have different uh, or alternative pathways so that the activation energy, uh, the new activation energy is now much, much uh much much lower so that is another green chemistry part of my project and i started this i started doing this effect before this this project um and for this particular project uh, for my uh, project i collaborate and um, i collaborate with vietnam with material scientists they are doing atom layer deposition and they are using nanomaterials precursor uh in their own um, in their own reaction also so there are a few parts of the project uh, that are related to brain chemistry. 
So uh, there are 12, as I said earlier, there are 12 principles of clean chemistry, but I'll be touching more on the principles that are related to my project. So the first one is on prevention. So um, you, you can find this on ACS website, and it's everywhere, yeah? Um, 12 principles of clean chemistry. Uh, probably I'm not uh, in the right position to tell you what are uh, the uh, really, but um, I can tell you the um, principles that I have chosen and selected for my project. So prevention is better to prevent waste than to treat or clean up the waste. So we, as I said, we are trying to save as much solvent as possible. We have been using a lot of organic solvents and we don't want to waste any of them because of course we can recycle and really purify the solvent, but probably the solvent will not be much effective. So what we can do is the best way is to throw them away. And we don't want that to happen. We, don't, we, have, we are trying to minimize waste as possible. And with this project, we are trying to use gas phase instead of solution-based synthesis. And uh, that's something not only we are minimizing waste, but we are substituting the waste with something else. Uh, sorry, we are, we are replacing the solvent with something else. We're using gas phase, so we are not using the solvent at all. And then for atom economy, uh, I think uh, most of you are aware of atom economy. Uh, and in fact, uh, in my recent publication, I, I tried to introduce this in the, in the, uh, as part of the characterization, as part of the synthesis, uh, synthesis part, as part of the experimental part, which we have to make sure that all the reactants that we use are used, are completely used, uh, and no reactants uh, should be wasted. So, example, you are using two moles of aldehyde and one mole of amine. So, we have to make sure that all those moles of reactants are completely used. Because, uh, and we can tell, um, in terms of atom economy, we can tell whether how efficient our, uh, we can tell how, uh, we can tell how efficient our um, synthesis is by calculating uh, atom economy. So there is a formula for this. Probably if you need to know more on this, probably later you can pay at me. Um, but uh, we have to prove to them that, the, that the, there will be minimal waste produced and there will be maximum reactants used in the whole process. So we have to convince them. And then last hazardous uh, chemical synthesis. So we are trying to produce chemicals we are trying to produce new chemicals, but we have to make sure also the chemicals are safe. Well, generally safer. We can relatively safer. We can say for sure, I think chemist knows this, we can say for sure that the chemical is safe, as in safe 100%, but of course they will bring some, um, if not much, little toxicity, but we can also always uh, design the synthetic process and also the chemical itself as safe as possible. So probably we can run some cytotoxicity studies uh, to make sure that they are less or non-toxic to people and also to environment. And then uh, we're designing several chemicals. Uh, I'm using cellophane ligands. They are very stable they, uh, towards moisture and also air. And they are safe, meaning you don't have to have um, special storage to store them. So they can be kept just in the normal vial and bottle. Yeah. And then uh, number six, design for energy efficiency. As I said, we are using uh, catalysis and a friend of mine is employing special atomic lady position, which are, um, which are aiming at uh, making energy much, much more uh, efficient. So there are more, there are lots. So number nine also, you can touch on catalysis. You can touch on real-time analysis for pollution prevention. You can touch on use of renewable uh, feedstocks and so forth. But as for my project, so these are the principles that, that I thought um, the most suitable for my project. Okay. So if you have questions, you can always drop your questions in the chat box. Yeah, I will read it later. Dr. T will help me read the questions later. And uh, now, so this year, they are pulling for applications. So the grant is called Green Chemistry Research Grants for Young Scientists. 
and then to you uh, the, the the deadline uh, lama lagi the deadline is on 30th June 2023 so now is the second February so you have plenty of time to prepare your proposal and these four months if you have any questions you can you can you can ask me you can contact me huh? So evaluations and awarding grants, um, the winners will be announced uh, before 30 September 2023 and the grant should be taken up within five months of notifications of your award, meaning you have to reply to them saying that you are accepting. Well, um, on this particular part, I have to be honest that it has been a long and long and arduous journey, so to speak, because uh, I uh, I'll, I'll be giving you the, 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 the timeline of my timeline later um, from the date of application until uh, the date of the project started. Yeah, because I I remember I I I applied in January 2021, but the grant is only available. I mean, I mean the money is coming in like a year and a half later, so almost two years after that. So um, we have to be very patient when it comes to uh, to this thing, yeah. And these are the international scientific jury. I think the chair is still the same person, Professor John Forish from Dublin, uh, news of Dublin Island. So there are many uh, jury here. You can see from many uh, from different countries. We have uh, we have from Ireland, and then we have from. Vietnam, we have from, uh, and definitely they are representative from Force Agro, and they are representative from IUPAC. In fact, uh, the former president of IUPAC also there, uh, sitting in the international scientific jury. And then, um, but I have been communicating with Professor Vladimir uh, Zarov yeah, before and after application. Uh, and, and in fact, he is the very person that I emailed to from my application. And, um, uh, yeah, you can look at these um, names later and uh, on the website. Yeah, moving. Okay, um, this is the, the winners um, of the grant in 2020. I mean, the very year, uh, the very year where we got this this grant, yeah. And we can see that we have uh, a demand of the grant, as I said earlier, the ceiling is 30,000 USD. Normally, they will give this full amount of grant to you. And you can see the, what well, I got idea of my research also uh, from the previous winner's title. So you can see the titles are all there. Yeah. So that for this one, Echoes Photovoltaics as new paradigm for solar energy conversion, also granted 30,000 USD. And this one from Italy. Yeah, and this one from Armenia and Dr. Ladari from where again from Tunis, Tunisia, and then Dr. Mahubela from South Africa and Dr. Viet Hong Nguyen. Uh, this is uh, my collaborator. Now I submitted two applications. One of the application rejected. Uh, one of the applications. Well, another application The very application that was accepted was the grant that uh, was um, applied or uh, led by Dr. Viet Hong Nguyen from Vietnam. So even though she was uh, named as the leader of the grant in that application. But the amount of the grant was divided equally into two. So I got half and Dr. Huang got another half because we need that amount of money to run the project here also in Malaysia at UITM. So meaning, uh, which means to say, uh, for the grant, you are going to have two uh, principal investigators. You are going to have four PI. So one PI is, is from, uh, one PI is from, in this case, from Vietnam and the other PI is from from your ITM. Um, so if you're asking me whether or not we have to collaborate with intense collaborators, I think it is strongly advisable, but not necessarily compulsory. Yeah. And then you can see that Dr. Azwa, he is also a group friend of mine from UKM. He has got the, the grant also. Uh, he is a very, very prolific researcher. You can you can search this guy up, yeah. And from UKM, and uh, he is doing something on uh, Phosphor uh, Gibson PPG. So this is the very 
subject matter that that has become their uh, their interest. So probably you have to know how to tackle um, their interest also. Okay, and then we have uh, from Brazil we have uh, Dr. Patrocino and then Selic from Croatia. You can see that there are no two winners from the same country. Yeah, so all these eight scholars, all from different countries. So, well, um, that's why in the guidelines, they can say that not only one grant per institution, but I think it is one grant per country. So only one, um, because in this case, Azua got this formulation. So, saya menumpang grant Dr. Huang. So we can say that only one, uh, one project from one country will be awarded. So let's say we have 50 applications from your idea, we can we have to consider also the might be more applications from some other universities and some other research institutions. But I believe in your idea and talent, uh, as I said earlier, all of you are having a very, very good research profile. And I think that will help you a lot uh, in this application. Um, inshallah, yeah, I, I believe, uh, I believe that, that we can also secure the grant despite the uh, despite the nature of the the nature of the grant that is very competitive okay uh, let me uh, tell you a bit about my project as i said i submitted in 31st january 2021 uh, the grant was submitted last two years and then, then the grant uh, award announcement was made on June, in June 2021, six months after the submission. Uh, you see, but the first installment of the funds was received in May 2022. So it was about a year after the announcement. So you have to be very patient waiting for the money. Yeah? Uh, so we have been communicating with UNESCO, like more than 20 emails, just to ask for the contract. Yeah. So we have to be really, really patient and persistent on, on this on, uh, on, on this matter, because um, and then we have to somehow push and urge them to to fund as soon as they can, yeah. Because if we don't do that, then probably will take. I think it will take much longer than this, yeah. And we have our key off meeting in June twenty twenty two, and the project is now uh, going on for like. Um, almost a year already. Oh, I probably I forgot to mention that this is one year funding. This is one year grant. Even though um, the amount of money given to me, I think this is a generous amount to me eh? uh, as a as a as a young scholar, as someone that is quite inexperienced. I think uh, the grant awarded to me is quite generous. 30,000 30, USD is, is a lot to me. But then again, the challenge is that you have to spend all the money within a year and there is no extension you cannot extend so you have to prove to them that your proposal is <coughs> sorry <clears throat> okay uh, was I? you have to prove you have to prove to them that your proposal is uh, is do is doable within one year if they think it is too much for one year then probably your application will not be considered uh, so that's something that is one of the challenges that I face because even though we have uh, thoroughly and articulately uh, planned the proposal with my friends, but uh, when the project is when the project has started, I think everyone knows this. Every researcher faces this that we we have some uh, you know things unexpected things unpredictability happen along the way so. Uh, we need more time, well, actually, but the, because I need to submit the report at the end of April this year. So one year for this project is actually not really enough, uh, but uh, we have to submit the, the findings and the data uh, 30th of April. So when you are submitting, please consider that also in your, in your proposal. Make sure your proposal is doable, feasibly doable within one year, but of course there are hiccups along the way, um, but that's normal. But make sure the proposal is really properly planned. Sorry. 
And I would like to thank um, this Young Scientist Network. So uh, let me um, promote you this. Yeah? Um, in Malaysia, we have Young Scientist Network, Academy of Sciences in Malaysia, YSNESM. Um, we need more members and affiliate members from UITM. I've been promoting this since I joined uh, YSNESM. And at international level, at regional level, we have ASEAN Young Scientist Network. This is the network that I been that I've joined in 2019. And I would like to thank this platform because through this platform, I got my collaborators. And through this platform also, I got this, not directly from this platform, I got this grant, but because of this platform, I managed to know more people internationally and luckily, we're lucky enough to get this grant. And because I remember I talked about uh, catalysis and palladium and nickel and also some rare earth metals during the during the conference, during the network session. And starting from there, we got the idea how to pitch for this project. And we are lucky enough, um, very thankful um, because we got the grant. Yeah. So uh, let me brief a bit about our project. The title was uh, the title is Screen Can Gain and Economical Synthesis of Palladium and Nickel Based Catalyst by Atmospheric and by Atmospheric uh, Atomic Lay Deposition ELD. Um, so as I said, I've been doing catalysis, if not not too detailed, but I've been doing catalysis. I've been testing my compounds um, as a catalyst in uh, in cup in carbon carbon coupling reactions. The new thing about this thing is that because we have list of database of precursors, so we have um, we have um, screened my compounds and we uh, and we found out that all these compounds have never been tested um, as a catalyst in this atomic layer deposition as a precursor. So that is one of the great novelty that we had uh, when we are submitting this application. So there are a few parts of the project. Uh, first part is synthesis using microwave, and then uh, we send the sample to uh, Vietnam, and then now they are doing some theoretical calculations and some experiments on ALD to know the reactivity of my precursors. And then there will be uh, AP, uh, SALD, uh, atmospheric pressure, a spatial atomic layer position uh, carried out there, and then once the precursor is ready, they will be sending all those precursors to me back and those precursors will be tested in coupling reactions. Yeah, and we are going to gauge uh, the performance of catalysts in terms of their recyclability, in terms of their reusability and of course in terms of selectivity and um, purity of the compound, of the coupled product that, that, that they are producing. And um, do you have any questions so far? Uh, wait, uh, before I thank you, <laughs> I will share. Uh, let me share. Yeah, that the day, let me share the uh, proposal. Yeah, I need to stop sharing first. So, uh, let me share. Now, can you see this, uh, the today? Yes, yes. Okay. okay, now let me scroll up. Okay, all the details, uh, application form and the recommendation letter, format, the template and so forth, all can be found on the website. Yeah? Uh, I'll be showing you the website as well as the folder uh, slightly after this. So this is the uh, application form. Uh, as I said, they, are, they have few names, but uh, as stated here, it is for Sagro UNESCO IUPAC uh, Research Grant in Green Chemistry for Young Scientists. So please read all the instructions very carefully. I think uh, I did this quite uh, often that I sometimes skip this instruction. Uh, it is important for us to know that this form can be also completed in English or if you know French, you can do it in French and sent, uh, get it sent to Chair of uh, International Scientific Jury ISG um, of the FOSA GROW, UNESCO IUPAC Partnership in New Chemistry for life with the requested enclosures. So meaning there are few documents needed for you to send. And then it must be sent electronic, electronically in the PDF, one single PDF file 
with exception of the reference letter do not send reference letter together with the uh, with the your, with your application yeah and this is the website uh, sorry the website no, no. Ini, this is the um, email that you have to send your application to and in addition one full copy of the entire application with original signature so you have to sign accept the reference letter should be kept by the applicant so you must um, keep one document for yourself just in case it is requested for you to send and submit to the chair of ASG. Yeah. So this information, this is the uh, PI of my of my uh, research uh, project. So he is from Vietnam. Uh, you can see this is the information. Uh, you have to the, the form is there yeah, in, in, in the website. And then title and then you have to mention that which host institution that going to be hosting you if you are doing with other host institution and i put prohada here uh, she was the head of uh, our ccg lab and then name of the members as you can see i was 36 then um 38 now so amalina 34 and prohada area was 53 uh upon application so as i said the member of the grant can be any age but the PI must be 39 and below. And you have to take the principle that the principle that is uh, you think relevant to you, that is pertinent to you. Okay. There are a lot here. So have you applied this? Yes. Um I was I, I never applied, so no. So did you get other um financial sources? for the same project so i didn't have any so you must take the proposed research subject a uh, proposed research project when it's going to be started and the sign so what do you have what do you need to have when you're submitting application form synopsis of the project there are project proposal form here which you can find here and then you have the timetable of the scientific work this is important the budgetary breakdown, I will show you this letter and then short CV of each member and list of publications mark with asterisk the most significant ones. I know most of you are having a lot of publications, probably endless list of publications. Unlike me, I have like less than 20, but um, I, I listed all and the tapi syarat dia, um, so even though it is uh, the, 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 I think it is stated in the guideline that you must publish at least three publications prior in the related area in the in your in your area uh, only then you are eligible to apply yeah and then phd and the approval letter uh, this also can be found on the website acceptance letter from the host a reference letter again please send this separately yeah do not send this together with your application and the chair, as I said, Prof. Porish from Dublin. Um, and then this is the synopsis of my research project. Yeah, I just scroll this through here. Yeah. And I skip up here. And then if you have any question, you can ask me later. You can drop me in the chat box or you can contact me personally. Yeah. And then um, the title of my the title of my project and the purpose, including immediate and longer aims. This is crucial. Yeah, you must divide into two parts, longer and also immediate aims. And background relating to the new knowledge or innovations, even though it's not stated here, please make sure you put uh, adequate emphasis on green chemistry uh, and also SDG here. And then, um, okay, the project is still ongoing. This is, uh, and then we have references and then plan, including details of experiments to be carried out step by step um, step by step uh, details here including communications at national and international conferences and then you have to put how is it related to sdg yeah and then now number six this is quite important they want to know because we cannot subcon this project to some researchers or some other institutions so if you are the applicant they want to know that the applicant is capable of conducting the research, meaning you have enough resources, you have lab, you have 
um, adequate uh, instruments and equipments, for example. So you have to spell that out in this particular section. Yeah, uh, so the suitability of home institute and also the host institute. So like I did mention that it's located in UITM and then uh, that we have been doing this since 2002 and that we have microwaves, HN, melting point and so forth. Yeah, even though it is basic, you might think that it is basic instrumentation, but just put it there. They just want to know that you are ready to, to carry out the project. The proper project. <coughs> Timetable, uh, you have to break this down into a few parts, like which part that you are doing, which part that your friends are doing, so that must be uh, spelled out. And you must also specify how how, how long, because this is 12 months project. So if you have to divide the times uh, proportionately, and then as I said, um, Dr. Nguyen will be coming here three, for three weeks. And then Dr. Nguyen will be doing the project five months there, and I'll be going there for three weeks um, at Finica University. And also um, I'll be doing the last two months will be uh, evaluating the performance of my compound as a catalyst. So two months, five months, three months, and three months. So if you sum this all up, then you will get 12 months. This is a budgetary breakdown. Um, it is not that detailed, um, but you must put as detailed as you can. Um, like I mentioned all the chemicals that I wanted to purchase. And then maintenance fees for MR for single crystal, and then um, how how much do you need for the stay uh, if you are traveling? And then uh, they need this. I think they are buying some instruments and equipment there. They are installing. They will be installing new equipment from this project in March, if not mistaken. And then characterization, and then exchange of two researchers. This is what I have mentioned earlier. And also on conferences, we allocate, uh, allocated around 6,000 USD. So the total will be 30,000 USD. So all winners, uh, I, what I can say, all winners are given the same amount, 30,000, except for one project, which was given 29,500. But well, um, I can see that. I can say that uh, everyone is given about the same amount. Yeah. So you have to provide your short CV. Um, very, very short CV like this. Um, education, awards and honors, and research experience, and then a bit what you are doing. Yeah, short synopsis. And then this of application. This of application, uh, you have to put some asterisk on significant applications and please make sure that your name is bold. Mm, okay, what else? This is PhD certificate. Uh, this is the formal approval. Uh, the template is that the template is provided. Yeah, do not worry. Uh, formal approval by Home Institute. So if you are applying, and this should be signed by your dean. If your friend from another country is applying, then their president should be uh, or their VC should be signing. In this case, I was the host, so that's why in this case my dean, Prof. Farida, uh, signed the document. So the template is there. I think the 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 template is is still the same. Yeah, and then formal acceptance uh, to host applicant for members. Yeah, so I have Propadaria and also the Tamalina here as a member. Okay, I think that's all. This is the budgetary breakdown. Yeah, as I have. Um, displayed earlier and this is this is the guidelines yeah so this is the last part here yeah, the day of my presentation so let me just go through this a bit can i do, do you still have time yes oh, sure great okay, okay. now um this is the guideline yeah i would like to highlight a few important things see just now it was it was Green Chemistry Grants for Young Scientists. Now it is named as Partnership in Green Chemistry for Life. So do not get yourself confused. It is, it is the same thing. Yeah. Now, uh, generate, apply new scientific knowledge. Make sure the novelty is well indicated. 
Does this grand young scientist age 39 or less? Okay, so this is what I have seriously mentioned this now, that normally in each call, no more than one candidate per institute will be awarded a grant. So I don't know whether it is per country, but, but per institute for sure only one, only one research project will be awarded. So the ceiling is 30,000 and then um, the deadline is 30 June 2023. You have so many times, you have ample and plenty of time to do this. The same application will not be considered, yeah? Meaning if you have applied before with the same project, you will not be considered. And then uh, what else? Use of fund, regional and international scientific collaboration. So if you, if you are asking me whether it is a must or is it compulsory for you to collaborate with international collaborators, I would say it is strongly advisable, but that is not really, really compulsory. Yeah? But based on the statement here, yeah, uh, it says that uh, the research project by young scientists in particular through regional or international scientific collaboration and or science industry cooperation. So if you are collaborating with industry also, that is, that is, that is uh, advisable, yeah? Uh, so to be on the safer side, then might as well you put your international collaborators here. Travi travel and living expenses will be covered. What else? Rental and research equipment, consumables will be covered. But make sure you keep your receipt, yeah? Small, small receipt also you have to keep because at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the project, you have to submit to UNESCO everything, every single um, cent must be reported. Yeah, preparation, publication, or information, communication, editing, graphic design. Yeah, so a, little, a, a bit on eligibility, uh, eligibility of the applicant. So you must be young scientist, age thirty nine and below. I think most of you here are eligible. Uh, this is what I have mentioned just now. At least three publications in recognized scientific journals. So at least three. So sikit je, nak tiga je. So it's like upon the application, I think I had less than 20 uh, publications. So Alhamdulillah, yeah, I was among the luckiest person uh, to get the scholarship. A scholarship, to so get the fund, yeah. And then, um, yeah, 12 principles of green chemistry. It must be it cannot be subtle. It must be as glaringly as possible. Yeah, it must be put it there um, as clearly as possible. Okay, and you must know it is one year project. Yeah, it's twelve months on D. And this is what I said just now. When you are mentioning about your lab, please make sure you describe all everything that you have, so that they are convinced that you can run this, that you can carry out this project. Yeah. Uh, think uh, and synopsis of the proposed research project. As I said, it is one of the shortest proposals that I have sent uh, for grant because it needs no more than six A4 size pages of single space text in times to Roman font size twelve. Uh, I need any code like eh? so we have to follow funder uh, uh, guideline. So it must be six pages only and A4 size. And it must be times to Roman, and it must be single space. Uh, so you have to cram everything there. And uh, okay. I think that should be that. I have touched almost everything, I guess. But which uh, let me go back to my to my slide because I have one important announcement. They have to make okay you can scan this uh this is my whatsapp um, you can scan this if you want to talk to me <laughs> if you want to ask anything <laughs> related to this grant um so that's my email uh well, i don't prefer email because there is a lot going on in our email i think everyone knows this so if you can scan and whatsapp me directly that is very much appreciated that's my link in if you want to connect get connected and also, other than the green chemistry uh, grant for young scientists, UNESCO also opening one more special grant, which is called Green Chemistry Special Grants for Research Projects on Phosphor Gibson. 
So I don't know what Fosso Gibson is, but since this is uh, this is uh, funded by Fos Agro, so it's something, something to do with the fertilizer. But if you are um, an expert in this area, please you can also apply uh, for this grant. Yeah, this grant also uh, is open until thirtieth June twenty twenty three. I think that's all for me. Thank you very much for listening. I'm sorry for any hiccups. Yeah, that's the best that I can do. To you, okay. Okay, thank you, Doctor Nizam, with us for sharing the valuable, helpful, and clear tips, as well as experience in guiding us in winning the Green Chemistry Research Grant for young scientists. It is important that the quality of research proposals must fit the criteria provided. So, as a young scientist, we should always try and never give up in the application of research grant, because there is a chance to be successful in future. One day, your patient and your consistency of work may be fruitful later. So, without uh, further delay, we move to Q and A sessions. Okay, participants are welcome to ask questions directly, or you may type in the chat box. They are already have a few questions in the chat box, uh, either in the YouTube link or in the Webex. So, however, I would like to open for the Q and A session first for the those uh, in the Webex. Anyone have question, please? Oh, hi, Assalamualaikum and good morning. I'm Nazriza from G. Uh, okay, that's me. I'm such great, uh, great uh, sharing and thank you so much for your uh, sharing today. So I got two great teams here. The first one is, um, is there any like pitching or interview session that has been done? upon uh, accepting the proposal by UNESCO and then number two what their KPI or what we, what we call key performance that, will, that they want is it a number of publication or a number of students uh, graduated or what is there any kind of uh, key performance on that that's all thank you thank you Dr. Nas. Um, okay on the pitching part there is none there is no pitching so the only thing that will be judged and reviewed and assessed is your submitted application. So that's why I said you must make sure that everything that you pen down in your proposal is as convincingly as, as possible because that's the only thing that will that that they will look at. So unlike our PhD thesis, can get the viva which we can pitch and defend, but we have no uh, room to defend our proposal. So that's the only weapon that we have. Uh, so there is no pitching. And on KPI, um, they, they, they want to see that there is a communication of the findings. Communication of the findings can be done through uh, conferences and publications. So that's why there must be a certain amount of money allocated for that particular area. So on communication. So we are planning to uh, present the findings of this project later at international conferences. Uh, still not decided. And uh, the findings of that uh, presented um, data also will be, uh, inshallah, published uh, in, um, in, the, in the publication. In terms of graduate students, there is none. Okay, we don't have to, there is no KPI on the number of students. But, well, I've been looking for a student for this project, actually. And why there is no why there is no uh, requirement for uh, graduate, graduate student because oh, one thing I for, forgot to mention is that you cannot pay you cannot pay students for this project there is no allocation and it is forbidden for you to use the money to pay people to run for the project that's why there is a specific guideline uh, mentioning that the applicant must be um, carrying out the experiments themselves so to speak, even though it is not realistic. I mean, all researchers will have their own GRE and RA to conduct their experiments, but um, in the application, you must convince to them that as though you are the one um, doing the project. This is not cheating or lying, but I mean, relatively speaking, I have to uh, I have to pay my students also, but I'm using some other grants, not from this grant. Uh, and then that's why they do not want any graduated student as a, a as a KPI. Thank you for the questions. I think I hope I am answering the question in the last. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Nas and Dr. Sharuniza. Any more questions from the floor? Well, 
while waiting, better we move to the other question in the chat box. Okay, before we start from the question from the YouTube first. The question from the other one, Naziha Wan Ibrahim. One, do you need to include international collaborators in the proposal? Two, which part of the proposal we need to highlight 12 principles of chemistry, title or problem statement? Three, how the process of fund distribution between the, between the university and the UITM and do we need to initiate the MOU or MOE after that? Number four, is there any requirement for the grant, paper or copyright? Thank you for the uh, thank you for the things, uh, for the answering. So Dr. Nizam, okay. no, <laughs> there's a lot of questions. Yeah, uh, I've already posted yeah. your WhatsApp. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, okay. first on um, on the international collaborators, well, I think uh, it is strongly advisable for um, for applicants to have international collaborator because what I uh, notice is that um, they need they need they need, they need uh, to see that there is inter uh, national collaboration through regional collaboration or collaboration with industry or collaboration with international institutions or collaboration within regional countries. So in this case, ASEAN or ASEA. So I think it is strongly advisable for you to have, because the, uh, as I said, I've submitted two applications. The other applications that I submitted, that one involved no international collaborators at all. And that was rejected just, just like that. So probably that is one of the reasons why, I don't know. I, I don't know for sure. And yeah, because the, the, in the guideline, there is no specific mention that you must have international collaborators. And the application that I submitted with international collaborators, and Alhamdulillah uh, went through and we got the grant. So probably it is strongly advisable. So that's number one. So number two, uh, in which part of the proposal we need to highlight the principle? Um, I did highlight the traffic uh green chemistry principle in the problem uh, in the in the background of the of the research as well as in the sdg when they are asking that how is it your project related to sdg and that is the area where i uh, pen down on um, on the green chemistry principle but i think it is best for you to put it on the background research background where you speak a lot about your problem statement um as well as your objective this it is not I, I think everyone will do will do this but probably you know being i, I don't know I, I personally sometimes when i am writing research proposal i thought that the reader or the reviewer will understand that as i do but we have to make sure that when we're writing this proposal especially when we are touching on the green currency principle they really really want to see how eventually these contribute to green chemistry principles. How are you actually um, incorporating green chemistry principles in your project? Okay, and then um, in the title, um, uh, in the title, what well, I did, I, I I put green and eco economical synthesis because that that why that that's what my project does. But um, probably you can give um, an ounce of hint of the green chemistry uh principle in your title okay number three how the process of fund distribution between Punica and them do we need to initiate and we get more after that now um what i did was okay um this is quite this is this is quite tricky um tricky as in as i said it, it took a, a lot of time first what i did was um the, the money from uh we need to sign a contract with UNESCO first. We, as in the applicant, in this case, uh, Finica University signed a contract with UNESCO, and then UNESCO um, channeled the money to Finica University. And from Finica University, I have to uh, request a certain amount of money from the university, and then I have to support that with uh, our proposal because in the proposal we have um, we have. We have the breakdown of the budget, so they know that certain money must be transferred to UITM. Uh, and then after that, um, I also uh, asked help, definitely, help and assistance from Unit Program Grant, UPG, 
and also from RNC uh, to help me on the transfer because there is, uh, even if I'm mistaken, there is an invoice that must be issued by a UITM. Only then they can transfer the money. Uh, do you have to sign an MOU or MOE? Well, I signed the MOU with the university before this grant uh, even applied. So after that, um, we can sign MOE because there is some uh, money involved. We can sign MOE with the university if you don't have any. But that is not compulsory and necessary. I just register this as normal registration for international grant. So that also will do. Okay. Uh, is there any requirement for um, is there any requirement for the grant paper or copyright? Is there any requirement for the grant paper copyright requirement for the grant? Meaning, I mean, or after after the completion of the project, or as I mentioned, as I answered earlier, there is no specific requirement on the on the copyright, but the communication must be done. Communication as in through conferences and also publication that is compulsory. Uh, number of papers. Uh, I think it is safe for any grant to have any what one published paper. Um, that is because we need to comply with the requirement saying that communication must be done on the data and findings. I think that's all. Uh, that it. Thank you, Dr. Niza, for clear answering the questions. Actually, in the chat box for WeBacks, we also have the same question from Dr. Norman. <laughs> Okay, so the first, the same question is the, uh, do we need any international collaborator for applying this grant? Is this the most important requirement? Yeah, Dr. Nizam already answered just now, right? Yeah. Yeah, then next question is, if our proposal is approved, do they need transfer to UITM or also other collaborated university and how long normally it takes to settle all the document until the fund is being transferred. So I think the duration Dr. Nizam can uh, add on on this session. Yeah, um, well, uh, yeah, in terms of money transfer, I think I, I talked about it uh, just now that uh, you, can, you can equally divide the money uh, per your uh, need. And it is depending on your need, what do you need and what uh, what your friends need, what your collaborators need. So the money can be divided uh, into multiple institutions. I think that can be done. Yeah. How long? Very long. Yeah. And uh, as I said, the announcement of the grant was made in June 2021. But the money, we got the money uh, in May 2022. But that, that, that money is actually first received by Fenika University. I got, I mean, UITM and me got the money much, much later. I think in July 2022. And then, potentially, and suddenly, tiba-tiba, they can hantar um, uh, the report April 2023. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then I would like to make a short announcement before we continue the last question in the way back. So uh, the attendance link is provided in the chat box. Huh? For your information, please take uh, note that the chat box is there is the attendance link. OK, so the last question in the way back is um, doctor, the period of grant is only one year, which is difficult to achieve. Is it possible to extend? I think uh, doctor, you can answer again. And the KPI is three paper with uh, within a year. Thank you. So the, the yeah, um, it's one year where well, I actually tried to apply for extension in the middle of extension, but I don't think that is that is um, possible because there is a there is specific mention in the guideline that this project must be carried out within a year. So I don't think they, they can tolerate with extension, but uh, I will try. I probably probably the first case, yeah, uh, uh, but uh, I can answer that probably later. If the application is successful, the extension application is successful, then I can say yes. But I think it is safe to say that it is not, it is not allowable. Yeah, extension is not allowable. And uh, what's the next question? The KPI, is it? Ah, uh, yeah, KPI is three paper in a year. Three paper in a year, yeah, is it? Is it, uh, they're asking no, about um, the KPI. Yeah. Uh, the communication must be done, uh, as I said, 
um, in the contract it says that the communication must be done. Communication as in it must be uh, the data and findings must be presented and credit must be given to uh, IUPAC, UNESCO and so for our group. <coughs> but uh, number of publications uh, is not specifically mentioned. But we aim to, so, but the project is quite, even though it's one year project, but it is quite, this is it's quite a lot uh, of things going on actually. So we can publish at least two to three uh, papers. So we plan to publish two to three papers, but the requirement um, and, have to have, and, and then we have to acknowledge uh, UNESCO and also uh, FOSAGRO and IMPACT in our acknowledgement. The number, I think there is no minimum or maximum number of papers stated so far. So if you found any uh, on the new guideline, probably you can alert me, but I don't think there is, there is a certain number of publications needed. Is that it? Okay, thank you. Okay, is there, is there any more questions from the floor? Hi, Dr. Te, I have one question. Yes, thank you, Dr. Lokman. Okay, yeah, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Nizam. Thank you very much eh, for your details uh, on your explanation of everything in this uh, for this grant. No I have quite a lot of numbers of questions because uh, I need to prepare because some sometimes maybe our researcher uh, call me to know yeah. a lot about this grant, right? Yeah, yeah actually, uh, I have one uh, just now. Uh, maybe I uh, wrongly heard you said that three papers a year. So maybe my, my I don't understand about that. Lah. So it's okay. Uh, we need to check the guideline later. And then another one is um, uh, if you said just now uh, that you you received the offer letter one year before after you got the money, right? So what is about your uh, date uh, starting date for your project? Is it uh, you after you receive the money or after you receive the offer letter? Uh, after we receive the money. So because um, the announcement was made in June twenty twenty one. But we didn't get the we didn't get the offer letter the formal offer letter as yet that was made through email and then well we were supposed to have um, a ceremony because they will call all the normally they will call the applicants uh, to come and receive there will be certain ceremonies for the winners but it didn't happen because of the PKP of of the pandemic and we skipped that part. And then after that, we have to assign the contract. The contract was only available to be signed a year after that, which is in May 2022. So after the contract is signed, only then we will get the new date. So my project will, uh, is scheduled to start in June 2022 until, uh, sorry, April 2022 until um, April 2023. So uh, it is not, uh, it's not started right after the announcement, but it started right after the contract is signed. Okay, thank you, Dr. Okay. What to do? Yeah, I okay. thought you had more questions okay. like that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lokma. Any questions from the floor? Okay, if no more questions from now, I would like to invite all participants to all turn on your camera for a photo session. So let's turn on our camera for a photo session. I would like to uh, ask certain Nizam to um, stop sharing. Thank you. I have stopped sharing. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so secretary, please take the photo. Thank you. Please on your camera. So what are the marking to? Yeah, yes. Okay. So okay, that's all questions for today, and we have reached the end of the webinar. Thank you everyone. And I believe this sharing session is beneficial to all participants. We hope for a higher successful rate for UITM researcher in the Green Chemistry Research Grant for Young Scientists Research Grant application in 2023. Let's start now writing good research proposal with the valuable tips shared today. 
on behalf of Renew, thank you, Dr. Nizam, and thank everyone for staying with us about two hours. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Okay, catch you next time. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Nizam. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.